Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Welcome once again to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger. This is the podcast where we're aware of football, baby, rolling around the field. We've been passed and fumbled till we don't know what to feel. What is that? What do you mean? What is that? That's our podcast. No, no. We watch Power Rangers. Oh, I've gone to great right. lengths to not watch football, especially professionally. Right. Okay. Um, that was actually football by Iggy Pop. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're right. We will be watching an episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers today. And that episode is entitled Fourth Down and Long. Mm. I imagine it's a football monster. I God, I hope so. Otherwise, first of all, I'll be very disappointed. And second of all, my musical reference will be totally off. That's true. Matt, do you know much about American football? You quite like the American football, don't you? I do like the American football, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know enough to watch a game and understand a game. Right. Can you give me a quick rundown? <sighs> Boy, where do you start? Uh, well, there's a ball. There is a ball. And they all, like, huddle. Y- yes. Right. So, basically, you know when you play, like, soccer or a shame football? Well, when, I know when other people other, play it. Yeah, 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 sure. And you just sort of keep going. Yes. In American football, you play a little bit and then you stop and then you reconvene and you come up with a new strategy and then you go again. Right. So, it... So it's really. You know, did you ever play foursome backs when you were a kid? I have no idea what you were talking about. Really? Okay. You have made something up just now. You <laughs> and Canberra have created some sort of nonsense game. No, 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 no. Foursome backs is a thing that lots of people play. I'm not sold. So basically, the team that is on the offensive is mm-hmm. trying to get the ball up the field towards the end. Yeah. And I mean, look, Matt, I don't know much about football, but I was across that bit. They have a few different ways of doing that. Right. They can throw the ball. Or yeah. they can run it. Uh, okay. So, if you're running it, they can get the ball as far as they can until they get tackled. Mm-hmm. And it's much the same if you throw it. You throw it, and the person is able to sort of catch it, catch it, and run until they're tackled. Yep. Uh, throwing it is a bit more dangerous because if the other team catches it, they get to run with it. They get to run it. They're on the offensive now. Yep. Sure. Um, so you have four downs, which is. Like, four goes at getting the ball to the end of the field. Right, yep. If you don't make it in that... Like, if you don't um, make a certain distance in that time, Mm -hmm. I think it's... No, I'm going to get it wrong if I say it's a certain distance. Right. Uh, If you don't get that distance in four goes or four downs, then you have one more shot to get it through the goal or you the ball goes to the other team. If you do make that distance... Actually, first, is that distance, like, a lot of the field? No, it's it's a... I think it's about a quarter, but I, okay, know, sure. I know I'm off with that. All right, okay. So if you do make that, do you get to start again? That's right. You get another four and you're good to go again. Right, okay. Yeah, so okay. in theory, you can clear like the field a quarter at a time and then get it to the end. That's right. Right. Yeah. But if you don't even make that, the other guys get a turn. Yes. And do they start at their end? So that there's a kickoff. Right. And then they intercept the ball and run with it from wherever they sort of... Okay, but every time like they get tackled or someone else gets the ball, yep. the game stops. That's right, and we reconsider everything. Yep, right. Yep, and so they have different plays each time. Yep, um, where they all agree on what's going to happen, and then they sort of go for it. Mm-hmm. And the goal is to try and come up with a play that the defensive team's play isn't ready for. Yep, sure. So they've got a certain amount of players they can have in the field, and they're trying to arrange them and sort of advise them in a way that will cover them for whatever happens. Is this why it's so effective when you get a golden retriever on your team? Because they just can't be predicted? Is that basketball or football? Uh, I believe Airbud played many sports, Matthew. Right, I see. I'm not so familiar with Airbud, so I have to take your word. Oh, that's fine. Word for that. Uh, yeah, so fourth down and long would refer to, like, this is their last shot to make it happen. Right. And they're going to sort of, uh, you know, go for a long shot and probably throw it. So metaphorically, it's like, you know, the stakes are high and we're going to have to do something drastic to 
overcome the situation. Right. Okay. How much of this knowledge do you think will be necessary to understand this episode of Power Rangers? Oh, zero. Nothing. None. Do you like? Do you think we'll be lucky if the Power Rangers are even playing football? They're not going to play football. Do you think they might watch football? They might like throw a football. Right. In the way that you might go to the park and throw an Australian football. Wasn't there an episode a very long time ago where they all got picked for the Angel Grove High School football team? Yeah, and they, they, that was a football monster as well, wasn't it? Yeah, um, there was like a coach monster though, I think. Yeah. yeah. Was that Rhino Blaster? That might have been it. It was a long time ago. It was a long... I think that was the previous set of Power Rangers long ago. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited. I like football, American football. No other t- forms of football. Do no other forms of football, no. including soccer. Yeah, just I just I get bored. What well, you don't get bored by the one where they're constantly stopping and starting again? Yeah, because American football is like chess, right? Like mm-hmm. the, you're setting, you're very strategic. You set up a play, you go, you see what happens. Right. It's really just chess, but with the potential that your pieces could fuck up and not do what they intended to do. Right, and also just get like. Trains rolled by some sort of horrifying monster man on the other team. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Whereas in like fo- uh, soccer, for example, yeah, they have like a plan that they agree on at the start of the match. Yeah, kick the ball into the goal. Yeah, but that that all goes by the wayside very quickly because you don't have the time to stop and reconvene. So you're just kind of just running and trying to keep up with everything. Right. So I think it loses that strategy very rapidly. Right. Whereas the constant reset in American football means that you can be like, okay. Let's have a plan. Go. Did that work? No. All right. Let's try a new plan. And it sort of progresses like that. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm always all facts are friends, Matt, as Tim <laughs> would say. Uh, Tim normally uses that to justify like talking about dicks at the dinner table, <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to use it in this case. <laughs> All right, shall we go watch the episode? Yeah, uh, this is episode 123. Wow. Which, yeah, I know, right? When you say it like that, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I should tell everyone, just in case they haven't figured out the previous 122 times, that we have a website. This could be their first time. It could be. That's Every right. episode could be someone's first episode. It's true. All facts are friends. That's true. Uh, www.rangerdangerpodcast.com is our website, where we have show notes and the Ranger Danger creature feature. If you want to Twitter tweet us on Twitter, we're at Ranger Decast and we're always ready for your Twitters. Send us an email, rangeagerpodcast at gmail.com and you may have it read out on the show. We're also on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Plus. Plus, we have a shop, that's rangeagerpodcast.com slash shop, where you can buy things and stuff like the mug I'm drinking out of right now or a shirt that I'm not currently wearing but could be, potentially. Good sell, Matt. Thanks. Good sell. All right, fourth down and long. Yep. It will be interesting, I think. Maybe. Oh, who knows? This show's been good lately. Sell. This show's been good lately. Maybe it'll be good this time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm here's hoping. Yeah. All right. We'll be back in a sec. I hate Rocky so much. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting the exact same episode as last week yeah. with a different monster and also, it was a very special episode about dyslexia. Yeah. Possibly the worst handled very special episode of all time. And there's a lot of candidates for that title. This is the first, like, solid clunker of this season, I think. Yeah. Like, last week wasn't amazing, but wasn't terrible. Whereas this the, was... The thing is, though, this episode might even have been fine if we hadn't had it last week as well. Yeah. Like, one of those episodes, we could have been like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. But the two of them together, consecutively, is insane. Yeah. How does that happen? I, 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 could, I think a distinct lack of creativity <laughs> is the answer to that question. It's just... I, I, like, even if you wrote them consecutively... Why not say, right, well, we literally have just had that episode. I don't know. I've got no idea. They aired three days after each other, like a Friday and a Monday. (laughs) Can you imagine me, a kid, (coughs) who had to experience that? Yeah, I mean... Wouldn't you just be a bit like, come on, like, I I don't pay anything for this, but I give you my time, Barry, and you've let me down. Oh, boy, will we take it from the top? Yeah. Um, All right, so we're in class... 
and uh, they're in science class, and Mr. Wilton is teaching. Yeah. Which is a surprising bit of continuity for this show. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, apparently, he only appears once more. Okay. But still... That's more than I was expecting. Yeah. Good job, Harry. That's, that's nice. Uh, so, Rocky's uncle, Uncle Joe, yeah. is going to talk to the football team after school. And uh, Uncle Joe is some sort of professional footballer. He seems to be the most famous quarterbacker in the land or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Alan tells us that. Alan is a new character. Yeah, uh, soon to be the Purple Ranger, I assume, because he wears all purple all the time. I think that's not what's going on. I think he just couldn't wear any of the other colours, and that rather limits your wardrobe options. Yeah, it does. That's true. Um, So they're doing some science, which means, as usual, tipping multicoloured liquids together, and uh, they just... I don't know. Alan reads out the formula... And Rocky tips something into something and it makes a lot of smoke. Yep. Now, when I was in high school and we did science, um, that science experience, like, they didn't give you 12 different chemicals and say, only two of these are the correct chemicals, (laughs) so you'd better get it right. The rest will smoke out the room. Yeah, it was, this is this, this is this, just mix them together and tell us what happens. Yeah. So... This is the Harry Potter version of school. Yeah, where it's just like, all right, you have to make a potion that cures a bezoar, so just go nuts. Tell us when you got it. And if you don't get it right, you may kill everyone. Yeah. Pressure. Uh, Oh, boy. So, yeah, they fuck up. There's too much smoke. Uh, The classroom evacuates. Yep. Rita's watching. Yep. And she says, if they're this terrible at everything... How is it possible that I cannot beat them? It's a very good question. It's not an unreasonable question. Lord Zed and Goldar and Rito are just throwing a football around? Yeah. I understand why it's necessary for the construction of this episode, but it comes completely out of nowhere. It's the laziest way to handle it. Yeah. You know, it's not like they were watching some football on the viewing board and like, hey, that looks all right. Let's give that a try. They're just doing it because plot. Yeah, you know? I mean, I kind of like the idea that Lord Zed and Goldar occasionally play catch because it feels like Goldar has wanted to play catch with Lord Zed since he showed up. That's why I don't like it because I want Lord Zed to never ever give Goldar what he wants ever. Right. Uh, so Finster comes in, yep, and he's made a centipede monster, and Rita's like, "Eh, centipede, yeah, what's that going to do? Yeah, enough bugs. Yeah, Which um, is a fair point. There've been quite a few bugs." Lord Zed drops his football. Finster accidentally drops the centipede monster onto it. Yeah. And then somehow that makes a football centipede monster. I don't... That is not consistent with any of the monster creation techniques we've been presented with thus far. No. And there um, have been several that they could have used. So this is Centerbacker. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, Centerbacker's got like a spiky football. Yes. And when he throws it at Rito, Rito catches it. Yep. And then gets turned into a Rito themed football. Yes. I mean, I like that. Do you? Yeah. I, like, it's the right amount of insane for this show, I think. Yeah. I just, again, because for some reason now on this show, being turned into an object is such a trope. Yes. I, I was like already not on board with it. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, if we hadn't had this last week, would have maybe passed off better. Yeah, but it's, even then, it's not like this is the second time this has happened. No. You know, like they get turned into shit on the regular. They do do that. Uh, but they're powering just in footballs, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. You want to tell me that those weren't just Power Rangers themed footballs that you can buy? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, so... My favourite thing about this, as soon as Rito gets turned into a football, Lord Zed and Goldar just start playing catch with that instead. <laughs> yeah. They have no respect for Rito. No. Which is sad, because he deserves respect. And uh, Lord Zed says that they don't make them like this anymore, with real monster skin. Yep. The world of Power Rangers is horrifying, if you think about it, for any amount of time. Yes. Uh, so Rita changes Rito back. Which is nice. Yeah, so uh, back at school... Bulk and Skull show up. They have somehow been assigned to guard Rocky's uncle. I imagine because, like, Rocky's uncle is a minor celebrity, so, like, let's get some police officers out. The thing is, a famous 
quarterback in America yep. is not a minor celebrity. Sure. That's a major, major celebrity. Well, I mean, I think that's the thing is it's unclear, like, how famous he is. Yeah. Like, maybe he's, like, on a small team, but he's Angel Grove's You're guy right. and, you know, he grew up there, so everyone in the town knows him. Okay. Or, yeah, maybe he just won the Super Bowl yeah. and the police presence is drastically underneath what it needs to be. Yes. Um, anyway, so they've, they've somehow got that. Uh, Alan reversed the elements. Billy, like, looks over his notes. And I don't, these notes. It looks like you reversed the neutron flow. I don't know what that means. What does that... I think all it means is that he was supposed to put, like, you know, X into B and instead put B into X. Right, but that shouldn't make... No. That's not how chemicals work. No, not particularly. Mm. Uh, maybe if there was a third chemical involved. Yeah. But... Anyway, Mr. Wilton threatens to suspend him from the football team until he can get his grades up. Yep. But there's a Stone Canyon game coming up. Mm. I like that we're consistent with Stone Canyon being like the town that Angel Grove plays in everything. Yes. But it has to be awkward for Rocky and Adam and Aisha, yes. who moved maybe six months ago yep. and are apparently on every team. Yes. Like everything that they do competitively. They would be competing against people they know very well. But yeah, you have to pick a side in life and in high school. <sighs> yeah. So Rocky says, well, look, if I help him study, will that help? Yep. The answer is no, Rocky, it won't, because you are also an idiot. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Wilton says, look, if you prove that you're going above and beyond, yep. that's at least enough for me to, like... Not say anything for this game, which is that's fair enough. Yeah. I think he doesn't have to suddenly become a genius. Yes, but he has to prove that he cares. Yeah. Um. So Rocky and Alan are studying at the juice bar. Yep. Uh, and Rocky says to him, "You're really smart. Why do you have so much trouble at school?" And Alan says, "I'm dyslexic." Yeah, not in those words, but no. With the it's m- like words and numbers are out to trick him, Matt. <laughs> I mean, I like the prescribing of, like, demonic intent, too. I wonder if we're taking it for granted because we live in 2000. Like, I think that's definitely part of it, to be honest. I think dyslexia was not something that was as widely accepted today, sure. uh, then as it is today. And I don't think you could just say dyslexia and have people get it. Sure. So I don't mind how this is handled. But it's... You know, I mean, it's a good thing for Power Rangers to do. Yeah. Like, because there would be kids watching this who would go, hey, that's what I'm like. Yep. Maybe I should talk to my Uncle Joe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's handled so poorly. Yeah. It's not like, I can't tell if it's better or worse that it's not a dyslexia monster. I'm glad it's not a, a dyslexia monster because that would really be trivializing the problem. It would a little bit, certainly, but man, it would just, just be on theme a little more. Yeah, and that would be better. Anyway, Uncle Joe had trouble with school as well. Yep. Um, oh, and by the way, we completely forgot about Uncle Joe's talk because we've been too busy studying. Yes. The, the talk that never seems to no. occur or be referenced ever. Well, no, they've missed it. It's too late. It already happened. Was his talk at a football field and no one turned up? Because... I assume they'd all already gone. Right. Bizarre. Anyway, uh, so they go to the football field, but before they get there, uh, Bulk and Skull show up and they have some, some I guess it's banter, technically. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Centre Backer shows up and he turns Bulk and Skull into footballs. Yep. And then... Alan gets turned into a football. And at that point, Rocky looks at Alan, and Alan has this, like, comedic moment of, like, whoa, this is a good... Which is not how you would react if you are a human who had never seen a monster before and was about to be turned into a football with no knowledge that that was a temporary situation. I mean, sure, but this is also the 123rd time that a monster has attacked Angel Grove. Like, I understand you'd be a little off-put. I think you would be more than a little off-put. They've got to be used to monsters by now. Yeah, there's a difference between being used to monsters conceptually. Sure. And And getting turned into a football. Yeah, that's terrifying. Um, All right, so Rocky's about to get turned into a football. Yeah. But Uncle Uncle Joe jumps in the way. Yeah. And he gets turned into a football. Oh, no. I am sad in that I wish it was Rocky instead, but... (sighs) Yeah, so Rocky morphs. And he fights centre-backer. Yep. 
And then basically Rocky's like, I am too much of a shit to deal with this. Can you call everyone? Yep. Zordon's like, yep, yep, they'll come. No Amy Jo Johnson in this episode yet. No. Or at all? No, she's at the end. She's Is just, she at the end? She's in the final scene. She actually has lines in the final scene. Okay. But like other than that, it's very obvious that part of her deal for not leaving yet was you have to do 30 minutes of filming in each episode. Yes. Um, anyway, so then some Tengas show up. Yep. And they just they start playing football, Matt. The, the kind of? Yeah. It, the thing is that football is contingent on people interacting with the football. Yes. And what they're set up is contingent on the Rangers not interacting with the football. Yep. So they've kind of got themselves between a rock and a hard place here. Yeah. Because they have to vaguely move in a way that suggests football, but never interact with the football. Yeah. Uh, also, the Tengas are immune to the football for some reason. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so basically what happens is the Tengas grab everyone and slowly football them. Yep. Tommy gets footballed. Billy gets footballed. Adam and Kim both get footballed mid-jump. Yes. Then... Aisha just, like, steps back and starts cheering for Rocky? Yeah. That's a strange strategy. Because, because that didn't work the last time. Like, Rocky just tried to take this guy on and failed miserably, and everyone else had to turn up. Yeah. He's not going to be able to handle it. No. We know this. So, Rocky kind of charges at center backer and they fight for a bit, and then center is like, oh, hold on one sec, turns Aisha into a football. Yep. And Rocky's like, oh no, it's just me. I failed last time and now I don't even have backup to call. So, uh, Zordon, can you teleport me away, please? Yeah, I want to go home. <laughs> and Zordon is like, yep, all right, uh, beeps and boops. And he teleports back to the command center. Yep. This is the most bullshit science that this show has ever done. It's pretty bad. And it's, this show's done some horrible things in the name of science. Yeah. But this is just... So the footballs, Rocky tells us, they release an energy wave. Yep. I'm technically on board so far. Like, they release an energy wave? Yeah, I mean, no, I'm with you. But that would be fine on its own. Yep. What if we turn the wave backwards and upside down? (laughs) You know, Matt, like you can do with energy waves. (laughs) Yeah. And Alpha's like, yeah, yeah, that that makes total sense. Let me make some dyslexic buckets that'll catch the footballs. Um, so there's a snowstorm moving in. Yeah. And, oh, for some reason, instead of just, like, deflating those footballs or putting them in a box on the moon, uh, Centrebacker has just teleported them to, like, the mountain. Yep. What, what, why the mountain? Why, yeah. It, it is... Like, it serves no better or worse purpose than where he was previously. Absolutely zero. So, they realise that Rocky's a piece of shit. Yep. And so, they call Ninja. Yeah! Ninja! Uh, so, Alpha 5 instantly creates devices to reverse the energy fields. Yeah. These could not possibly look any more like the $5 Woolworths buckets that they are. Th- this is the worst use of cheap props I've seen on the show so far. It's just a bucket with just- like a bit of foil on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's woeful. It's just a big purple bucket with, yeah, some foil and maybe, like, a, a lamp. Or something, yeah. But it's so, so bad. So bad. Especially because you can still see, like, the spinny plastic handles. Yeah, the handles are what really kills it. They're just big bucket handles on them. Uh, yeah. No good. Anyway, so Rocky and Ninja show up. Yep. And let, let's cut this one short. He throw, center back and throws the football. They catch it in the bucket. The bucket shoots it back out with yep. the energy wave reversed. And upside down. S- somehow. Um, and then that turns... First they turn the civilians back into people. Yep. And teleport them away. And then turn the rangers back into people. Yep. I... It's just... It's nothing. It's, it's, it's a bad episode. Something that we've seen in Dino Charge, particularly, yep. is the cutting down of other parts of the show to pad certain parts. Like sometimes we'll get a 30 second Zord fight. Yep. But in exchange, you get a proper first and second act with set up for things and resolutions. Yes. 
this show needs some of that. Yeah. Because at the moment, it's very stuck to like seven minutes of human people, seven minutes of Power Rangers, a quick Megazord fight, wrap up. Yep. And it just... It's getting really tiresome. Yeah. Because it doesn't give them enough time to do any of those things particularly well. No. Anyway, so center back it grows, yep. and now it's snowing. Yep. They went to a lot of effort to justify this snowing scene. Yes. When it really could have just been a lie from Zorn saying, hey, by the way, the snow's not coming in. Yeah. Because when Rocky and Ninja teleport to the mountain, he's like, oh, a storm's coming in, and it's cold enough to snow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously snowing in the Sentai fight footage. Yep. But you could have just... You didn't have to go to that much effort, guys, really. No. Especially when you went to no effort on any other part of the episode. Yeah, know? exactly. Um, I had this thought, Matt. Yeah. What do we have to do for a legacy ninja? Oh, I don't know. I would love one, but... Because if the, if the Ninja Megazord is the next one that they've yep. announced, it has to come next or not at all, right? Yes. But, I mean... He could do a bit of transforming, even, because he does turn from ninja into samurai ninja. Were there ninja figures that did that? I believe there were, with flippy heads and... Yeah. yeah. It's just like, in that Megazord scale, he'd be pretty cool. He would be cool. Ninja is the only good thing about this episode. Yeah. And even then, he doesn't get to do much. No, he doesn't. Uh, so, I mean, this was weird. We see all the Zords coming, yep. especially Tommy's, yep. but the Falcon Zord does not show up at all. No. It doesn't even, it doesn't, doesn't dock with the Megazord, it's doesn't do a flyby. Not there. It just, <laughs> ma- like, maybe it's because Ninja takes out Senderbacker really quickly. Yeah. It, it just didn't get, like, have enough time to turn up. Yeah. On the subject of Tommy, a few minutes earlier, when Tommy got transformed back into a person, yeah. we get a line from Saba. Yeah. He's completely inconsequential. And it's bizarre, because we haven't heard from Saba in, what, a season? Maybe since Saba showed up. Yeah. Like, since very close to that point. It was, like, completely bizarre, because it didn't serve any plot purpose. No. It seemed to be there just to remind people that Saba talked. Yeah. Hey, kids, remember this cool sword? Yeah. But, like, they No, I'm with you. It's just... It's so strange. Everything about this episode is just bizarrely constructed. Yeah. All uh, right. So yeah, big sword fight. Ninja gets to do some cool sword fighting, which yep. is cool at least. And center backer dies. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Job. Job done. Yep. Remember the days when they just stood on top of Tor and then dropped from space? Yeah. Wish they could do some more of that. It only really happened once or twice, but it seems like more because it was great. It was the best thing that they'd ever done. Yeah. All right. So on the moon, everyone's like, "Oh, I guess we failed at that." And Finster says, well, we shouldn't blame each other for what happened. Everyone goes, all right, Finster, it was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Finster. Poor Finster. So, Alan doesn't have to quit the team. Yeah. Why doesn't he have to quit the team, Matt? Because he's figured out what just that is. Yeah, so he told Mr. Haley about his problems in school. And what he says is, he did the rest. Which, like... <laughs> It doesn't imply that he taught me about dyslexia. It implies that he paid Mr. Wilton off to keep me on the team. Yes. Anyway, uh, Alan took him to, like, the learning centre. And the centre said that lots of people are dyslexic. Even you, small child at home, could be dyslexic. Yeah. Anyway, now they know the problem, they can fix it. Uh, a football... Uh, they, 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 they do imply fix it, which isn't really how that works. No. But that's fine. Uh, a football knocks some fruit all over Bulk's crotch. Which was a disappointing regression. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I thought we were past that. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, and then that's the end of the episode. Yep. And then, Matt, do you want to describe that credits tag? So it's in the Fortress on the Moon. Yes. And Centerbacker comes out of one of the hallways at the back. Mm-hmm. And it's super sped up footage. And he just sort of moves up and down and dances around in super sped up footage while, I guess you could say quipping, if you're super generous. Yep. And then Lord Zed acts kind of frustrated about it. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Why is it in fast forward? I don't know. Is it just because it was longer than the credits? I I think it's just because 
they think that kids think the things moving fast is super funny. I mean, it can be, but those things have to already be a little funny. Yeah. It's not going to, like, do it by itself. <sighs> this episode was terrible. It was really bad. It was just... So well, let's confirm that. So we have our scale of Rocky, Aisha, Adam. Yeah. Rocky this is bottom, sub right? Rocky. It's sub, like sub Rocky. It's just, yeah. it's lazy, and it's poorly written, and it is actually just last week's episode, right down to everyone except Rocky getting turned into something. Yes, and yeah, it's just, yeah. I, d- I don't understand. I think this happened last time that we got two Rocky episodes in a row. Yeah, it just. I don't understand why, even from a production standpoint, you'd think it would be better to spread those around. Yeah, but maybe it's like just ripping the band-aid off. You've got two Rocky episodes. No one wants to watch them. You get them over done with, and then you can just enjoy the rest of your life. I mean, when you put it like that, it does kind of make sense. Yeah. All right, what do we think about Center Backup? Uh, you know what? I didn't mind him. He wasn't as bad as the episode he was in. No, that's definitely true. He he was at least had an interesting visual gimmick. He looked super gross because he was like hilariously over muscled, <laughs> and on top of those disgusting bulging muscles were like centipede in- legs bits. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a cool design. He had a gimmick that would have been cool if it wasn't just last week's gimmick. Yeah. Um, he played a bit of football. Yeah, I think so. Sort of like mid, uh, somewhere about the middle. Yeah, I'd agree with you. So let's have a look at who's around there. Um, let's see. In the middle, we've got uh, Slippery Shark. Mm, yeah, Pachinko Head. He's not as good as Pachinko Head. No, I don't <laughs> know that he's as good as Slippery Shark either. To no. Be uh, let's go a little further down. Yep. Uh, Samurai Fan Man. He's okay. better than Samurai Fan. I man. think so, yeah. Um, okay, he's better than Fang. Yes. Who was the racist Goonie Bird Egg Monster. Yeah, bizarrely racist. Um, he's better than Genie. Yes. He's better than Cyclops. Yep. He's better than Photomare. Yep. So, right above Photomare is Slippery Shark. So, that cool. seems to be a perfectly sensible place to put him in. Yep. At number 47. Yeah, it's a pretty good showing for such a terrible episode. Yeah, all right. That's centre back up. Ah, uh, all right. It's been a very short episode, Matt, because it was, it was god damn awful, terrible, and nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next week we have Stop the Hate Master Part One. <laughs> Great. Finally, the Power Rangers get to fight Hitler. I just. Why do I assume that the Hate Master is Hitler? <laughs> because he's the Hate Master. <laughs> if you were to apply the title Hate Master to anyone in history. It either goes to Hitler... No, I know... Or maybe Bill O'Reilly. I know why it is. There's a Marvel character called the Hate Monger right. who is a clone of Hitler. Right. That's what it is. Okay. And boy, by the way, that's fucked up. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. Okay. So, next week we're going to stop the Hate Master. Yeah. Um... Well, let's talk about that next week because I've got a lot of questions. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys then, I guess. See you then.